네. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is our great honor to welcome you to 2020 AELT Alumni Day. Please allow me to greet you in 12 member uh, economies languages. Brunei, Assalamu alaikum. Chile, Mexico, Peru, hola, como estas? Philippines, Kumutza, Maliki, PNG, hello. Thailand, Sawadika, Vietnam, Xinjiang, China, Daza Hao, Russia, Dobre Utro. It's my true honor to MC this important event. My name is Ms. Tasum Kim, and I'm a senior program specialist at the Institute of APAC Collaborative Education. Personally, I have attended the fourth AELT Alumni Day, which was held in Indonesia in 2019. This year, due to the COVID-19, we are hosting the fifth AELT Alumni Day in a virtual manner. In this regard, we cannot see each other at the offline space, but it is also exciting to see you and reconnect with you online. Before we begin the 2020 AELT Alumni Day, please allow me to introduce the VIPs who are here with us. Although we cannot hear the loud applause, please welcome each and every VIP with your emojis. Director Ko Young-hoon from the e-learning division, Ministry of Education, Republic of Korea. <laughs> Deputy Director Jin, the Ministry of Education, Republic of Korea. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> and Professor Park dong Sun from the Institute of APAC Collaborative Education. Please welcome him. Dr. Margarita Ballesteros, Director of International Cooperation Office at the Department of Education. And Dr. Luxman Smansin, Chief of International Resources Mobilization and Utilization Group, Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research, and Innovation, Thailand. And we would like to also distinguish speakers who are our featured AELT alumni. Ms. Stephanie Ulua, English teacher at the Enzo Ferrari School in Chile. She has attended the 39th round of AELT in 2017. Could you wave your hands? And Mr. Joseph Santos, Educational Supervisor, Department of Education, the Philippines. He has attended the 27th AELT. Professor Ninia Galaka, Faculty Researcher at University of Santo Tomas in the Philippines. She is an alumni from the 5th AELT, which was held in 2007. And Dr. Suraz Kangasabai, Assistant Director, Ministry of the 45th Round AELT Alumni, which was held in 2019. The four speakers will share their personal experiences as well as the application of AELT lessons and outcomes to their professional areas of work. Next, we'll proceed with the opening remarks by Director Ko Young-hoon, e-learning division, Korea. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Dear distinguished AELT alumni, ladies and gentlemen, it is great honor and privilege for me to open the 2020 APEC e-learning training program alumni. The APEC e-learning training program is an official APEC human resources development working group project. The program aims to narrow down the digital divide in the Asia Pacific region. To achieve this goal, the first round of AELT was convened in Korea in 2006. Since then, the Ministry of, Korea, Ministry of Education of Korea has conducted a six rounds of AELT. As a result, the APEC, APEC Learning Training Center has accumulated a total of 886 alumni from 12 member economies. These remarkable achievements was possible with the generous and kind support of APEC member economies. In this connection, I deeply appreciate the APEC and 21 APEC member economies participation and engagement in the program. Especially, I would like to capture how the AELT program is advancing in the times of global pandemic. This year, the Ministry of Education, Republic of Korea, has implemented the 47th and 48th rounds of AELT virtually for the first time. We could see the beautiful and big smiles of the AELT as well as education policymakers and professors 
on our screens. We are grateful that we could be connected both online and offline, even in these difficult times of pandemic. Through the online collaborative study sessions and special lectures, we have shared our exemplary Iranian policies, policies and practices. In addition, at the AELT Forum, our distinguished AELT alumni have presented their economic action plan presentations. I was very impressed that our proud AELT delegates have reflected in-depth studies and discussions on e-learning policies. And it is my sincere AELT plans, the hope for the e-learning development in the Asia Pacific region. In addition to this hope, I also hope that today's AELT alumni day serves as a platform for platform to connect our honorable delegates' experiences and e-learning policies. Thus, it is my great honor to open the 2020 AELT Alumni Day when our delegates could retrace our memories of the past training programs. I look forward to hearing our delegates also and witnessing your active participation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Ko. As Director Ko has emphasized that e-learning is gaining its importance with the rising demand of distance education in the era of new normal. Korea has implemented its e-learning uh, system in the times of the pandemic. So we hope that today's Alumni Day will be a good opportunity for uh, not only our alumni, but also the prospective AELT participants to discuss about the further and better utilization of ICT in education. Now, we'll invite Professor Park dong Sun to give a come to the stage with a warm round of applause. Director Go Yong hoon Minister of Education of Korea. Deputy Director Kim Aram, Minister of Education of Korea. Dr. Margarita Ballesteros, Director of the Philippines. Dr. Luxman Smansin, Chief of Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research, and Innovation of Thailand. Distinguished alumni, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor and privilege for me to welcome you all to the 2020 APEC e-learning training program Alumni Day. The 2020 AELT Alumni Day is our fifth Previously, it was held in Malaysia in 2016, in Vietnam in 2017, in the Philippines in 2018, and in Indonesia in 2019. Each year, we had a great pleasure to visit and see our alumni in aping member economies. It was very exciting to hear visual professional achievements and continued interests and passion for e-learning policies and practices. This year, due to the COVID-19, we're hosting this AELT Alumni Day virtually for the first time. In this connection, it is our great honor as 886 alumni from 12 member economies. We sincerely wish that this Alumni Day serves as an opportunity for all participants to bring back our warm memories of the APEC e-learning training program. Based on, our, based on your kind support and sincere participation in the past 15 years, the AELT Center has convened on the training program to narrow down the digital divide in the APEC region. We are very grateful for this outcome and wish to extend our alumni network. Our idea is to develop a professional network of e-learning policymakers and experts in the Asia Pacific region 
to advance and continue digital education. Then I wish that our proud AELT alumni can get together and reconnect with our colleagues. I also wish that this event would be an opportunity to develop mutual partnership between our A Ministry of Education as well as schools and universities in AP economies and the AELT Center, which is strongly supported by the Ministry of Education of the Republic of Korea. The AELT Center promises to partner to build both individual and organizational competencies to create effective and efficient online learning environment in the Asia Pacific region. Last but not least, I wish to express our deep appreciation to the Ministry of Education of the Republic of Korea for hosting this meaningful and important event. We are able to exchange and discuss how to develop concrete e-learning strategies, policies, and insights. Once again, I warmly welcome everyone who has joined us today I wish all of you a very fruitful very much. Thank you very much, Professor Park, for your warm welcoming remarks and uh, congratulatory remarks. Uh, as an organizer of the AELT and home of the APAC e-learning training center, the Institute of APAC Collaborative Education deeply appreciates the Ministry of Education Republic of Korea for its continued support. Next, on behalf of our 886 alumni from 12 member alumni of the 25th round of AELT in 2013, Dr. Luxman Manson from Thai Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research, and Innovation will give us the appreciation remarks. Please let us invite Dr. Luxman with a warm round of applause. Hey everyone, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Uh, Director Ko Young Hoon, Learning Division, Ministry of Education, Korea, Professor Park Dong San, Chairman of IACE, Dr. Chen Philippine and uh, distinguished speaker and participant. On behalf of the Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation, Thailand, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to call the Ministry of Education and Institution and Institute of Epic Collaborative Education for 2020 Epic E-Learning Training Alumni Days. This all face the COVID-19 pandemic situation. Also limit, limited physical overseas activities significantly. But this event is organized to an online platform and technology system allow us to meet virtually today. As the professor, professor AELT program started in 2006 and keep continuing for already for 15 years, Thailand is delighted to be a part of this success story. Together with all of you, we sent 26 participants to join this uh, comprehensive program. So this program is not only meaningful for the joint mechanism to enhance the capacity for our various APEC member economies that participate by education, but also offer valuable opportunity for all of us to meet each other and sharing the good practice, uh, sharing the good practice among uh, epic family. Last but not least, I do uh, uh, hope you all stay safe, healthy, and doing well at this time. Here, Thailand will be host the epic 2022, and I do hope we will be see, uh, able to uh, organize the on-site meeting and welcome you all to Thailand. Thank you, Kamsa Hamida. Thank you.
Hao Kun Ka, thank you very much, Dr. Luxman. As we know, the AELT is a very unique opportunity for participants to study as well as a chance to experience the cutting edge edutech and Korean culture. Yet in 2020, due to the COVID-19, we could not invite our AELT participants to Korea. Instead, we have kicked off our first ever virtual AELT program, and we have set up a learning management system using the Google Classroom, YouTube, and Zoom webinar for the live real-time collaborative studies and discussions. With this concerned and eighth rounds of AELT were conducted as distant learning programs. We have shared the outstanding e-learning policies, strategies, need and long-term plans from APEC member economies and diverse contents concerning digital education. In this regard, let us invite Ms. Park Hyun Jung and listen how the APEC e-learning training center has successfully adapted to the current challenges. Please welcome Ms and achievements of the 2020 ALT program. Good morning, afternoon, evening from 12 APEC member economies. This is Ms. Hyun Park, the program specialist and the Institute of APEC Collaborative Education. Today, I would like to express my sincere of joining this event. This year, 2020, is a challenging to me. Uh, when I attended the 37th APEC Human Resource Development Working Group at NEP meeting, I didn't expect the COVID-19 lasted more than a year. However, at the same time, this year has become an opportunity to conduct a virtual training. The APEC e-learning training, um, was from now on, I would like to present about the results and the achievements of the 2020 ADLT program. Let's start with the history. When the Korea was a chair of APEC in 2005, the MOE Korea suggested the e-learning training program as a pioneer of e-learning to launch the successful project. The MOE Korea took their first step by participating in 27 APEC HRD working group from APEC members and approver. Hence, the Ministry of Education Korea got 11 APEC members of economy's support. In 2006, the APEC e-learning training center was established in Busan and the first round of APEC e-learning training program was launched. And then with uh, the and the professionalism as a training organization, the AALT Center moved to the National Education Training Institution. At the 26th APEC Economic Leaders Meeting in Papua New Guinea in 2018, the APEC e-learning training program got its recognition. And as of 2020, a total of eight from 12 economies successfully completed the AELT program. So the APEC e-learning training program, Alumni Day is an annual event to share the best practices of APEC e-learning training program. In 2006, the first round of AELT Alumni Day, yeah. after that, the event was held in Vietnam, the Philippines, and Indonesia consecutively. The AELT Alumni Day is supposed to be held in one of APEC member economies. However, thanks to this virtual event, we could invite all of our alumni from 12 APEC member With this long history and best practices of the AELT program, the, this program got huge recognitions at the 26th APEC Economic Leaders Meeting. As you can see on this slide, the president used the APEC e-learning training program as the representative program to bolster the digital capabilities of the APEC member economies. As introduced, the AALT Center, with the support of Ministry of Education Korea, will do our best to be the representative digital capability. Now let me share how APEC e-learning training program turns the remnant into remnant. After the COVID-19, 
the AELT program plan was changed from online to offline to online. In alignment with this decision, the AELT curriculum into the features of the virtual training, and then we casted a renowned education policy maker and professionals such as pro teachers, supervisor and professors to make a video lecture. Lastly, as a final stage, we selected a universal online platform such as a Google Classroom for learning management system, Zoom for a collaborative study and workshop. So this whole procedure made the 47th and the 48th ADLT very successfully. This is ADLT annual overview. The 10 for the 47 ADLT, uh, which was held from September 7 to September 13, the 10 educational policymakers from five APEC member economies has successfully completed, which was held in November 6 to 12. The six, uh, sorry, the 13 delegates from six APEC member economy successfully completed our training program. And our last event in 2020 uh, is being held by YouTube right now and to share the best practices of ADLT experience. This is the picture on the left side. This is the closing ceremony of our, the first 47th AELT program. And the picture on the right side is the opening ceremony of 48th ADLT. During the training, the IAC staff and the designated professor were truly impressed by their passion and the faithful attitude toward the virtual I believe everyone in this picture is watching our YouTube live streaming event. And the average of the satisfaction survey point is 4.67 out of five, which is very high and means that the most of the participants were highly satisfied with the virtual training. And in this year, with 23rd country report were cultivated and the delegates complete 220 course report after listening special lectures. This is the list of action plan that participating economy has completed. The Brunei um, has focused on the approaches Chile has researched on the assessment and feedback during the online teaching and learning. Delegates from Indonesia completed action plan on the teacher digital training method. And the Malaysia has researched on the teacher's competency using the Delima, the platform that Malaysia's teacher, teachers pedagogy and ICT literacy. The Papua New Guinea's action plan is about access of ICT for Feru the educational service using the tablet PC and the delegates from the Philippines has completed the action plan on ICT enabled teaching and learning. And the Russia has cultivated the education for the enhancing e-learning. The Thailand did the collaborative study on e-learning training program for the teacher's digital literacy and lastly, the delegates from Vietnam completed the action plan on the teachers for effective, sustainable e-learning lessons. And this slide shows the number of participants by economies. This large number of alumni organized great educational network among APEC member economies. Today's e-learning program couldn't be possible without the support from Ministry of Education Korea and the APEC member economies. Dedication and Under the vision of narrowing down the digital in APEC, the AELT program will do our best to promote and develop uh, innovative international training program 
and by providing the best e-learning policies and practices in ABLT will serve as a bridge to give a blueprint of e-learning education policy. Last but not least, the ADLT will do our best to build a strong network between APEC education policymakers, experts, and private sectors. And this is the end of our presentation. Personally, I was quite sad for the first time when the offline training was replaced by online training. There are many excellent educational institutions and places we could learn in Korea. However, this new way of the training has broadened the education and what the training means itself. And I hope our delegation has taken these challenges into opportunity to find a hope and better way of e-learning education. Until we met again, let's keep in touch with and share our news and knowledge. Once again, I deeply appreciate for your participation and collaboration. Let me conclude my presentation of the latest training. 감사합니다.
Thank you very much, Ms. Park, for the thorough presentation and also a nice video. It reminds us the warm memories of our first, first ever virtual training program. As uh, Ms. Park and the AELT had some limitations and difficulties, such as the time difference between member economies and lack of site visit and et cetera. At the same time, we discovered and saw the great potentiality and possibilities in distant learning. The virtual training program is enriched by our AELT delegates' passionate participation, as well as our collaborative studies professor. So we deeply appreciate the ministries and departments of education for their kind support. Now, we will invite our honorable speakers who are our featured AELT alumni. We would like to invite four speakers and listen to their individual as well as the organizational application of the AELT lessons and the outcomes. The first speaker that we would like to invite is Ms. Stephanie Ulua, the alumni of the 39th round of AELT in 2017. She says, quote to quote, AELT training new perspective on how the teaching and learning process was taking place in public schools. Thanks to my experience and skills from the AELT, now I belong to the Red Maestros de Maestros, which is the Selected group with the most outstanding teachers of Chile. Please welcome her with a big round of applause. Uh, good morning and good evening from Chile, um, especially to the organizing authorities, Director Jan Honko, e Learning Division Ministry of Education Korea, Kim, e Learning Division Ministry of Education Korea. Uh, Dr. Margarita Ballesteros and Dr. Luxmon Smansing. I really appreciate the opportunity to share and discuss about educational, uh, especially because of the current times we are experiencing because of pandemic. First of all, I'm going to introduce myself. Um, my name is Stephanie Ulloa Oates. I'm teacher of English and English and Spanish. Uh, I work at Enzo Ferrari Primary School in Puden. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience in the 39th round of the APK Learning Training Program in 2017. I've been teaching for 12 years from kids to other schools. Um, and in 2017, I got the opportunity to travel abroad uh, and work on a project proposal. Um, just a look at my location. <laughs> I'm from Puden. Uh, it's a small town located in the Araucanía region in the south of Chile. And my country is located in South America. I attached some pictures from my school related to English Week, which is a annual activity of cultural immersion. Um, some students certif certified the English online course, my English workshop with uh, little kids, uh, public speaking contest. And in, at the bottom, you can see my colleagues from Enzo Ferrari. Um, they are very important for me because uh, any idea that you have, they collaborate, we work together as much as we can. I'm going to start now with uh, what I have learned. Uh, uh, we were learning on four aspects. First, we were learning on the lectures based on education issues, distance education, student-centered learning, e-learning in Korea and coding program. Um, that gave me a lot of help and it was really meaningful because my project was based on... Secondly, uh, we had some workshops sharing the current educational uh, status. Uh, and then I realized that the Pacific Ocean was not the only thing that we shared. <laughs> we shared more than that because we have the same educational goals. So I were um, quite similar. Uh, the field visit. Uh, I met Seoul Technical High School, Korean National Open University, Seoul Education Museum, 
and the virtual reality complex in Korea. Um, uh, then, when on that on the field visit, I really build its future uh, based on its past, something that is very different from my culture and my country. So I took the best that I could from that experience, from that field visit, and I use it in uh, uh, to improve my teaching performance. Finally, we have the collaboration proposal, which I uh, really appreciate because that uh, made me to develop interpersonal problem solving and communication skills, as well as to share ideas with your uh, with people from different economies, from Russia, Thailand, um, Peru, Mexico, Indonesia, Malaysia, what I remember. The project proposal was an English online course, which is similar to gamification strategy in which you took some um, video games elements and you use them for learning purposes. It was afforded by the Ministry of Education, sponsored by the English Open Source Program, which is a division of the Ministry of Education. The idea was from, for students from seven to 12th grade high school in order to improve their English by using ICTs. Uh, it lasted about four months. The English online course started in my hometown, Puden, with about 500 students, and in another town, uh, San Javier. So there were about months working on the English online course. Lately, um, thanks to the English Open Source Program and the Ministry of Education, um, the English online course spread it along the whole country. So it was a national. Uh, what we got from here was certified students because once they finished the English online course, they got a certification according to the European English framework, like A1, A2, B1 performance. We have a lot of motivated students and obviously they improve the English language skills. Um, so we were working all along the country, uh, but in my hometown, I was not working alone. It was a collaborative work. I worked with the rest of the teachers of English in my hometown. So I attached some pictures of my from Enzo Ferrari school um, in which students were working with the English online course. So this course, um, uh, I can show you the, like, this is a final report. So once you finish the English, all the reports from the students, statistics, results to analyze and have the feedback for them. Even though we experienced a lot of technical problems, but it, it was uh, really um, helpful to work collaborative, collaboratively because the institutions, schools, um, among us, on uh, headphones, um, internet speed, how to adapt the time and the curriculum. So any problem or hardship we have, we solve it uh, as a team. So now what I have done uh, in relation to, the, we, we finished the English online course, the students got the certifications. And not just in my hometown, Puren, but along the whole country. So we have about 5,000 licenses for free uh, for state schools, reading, listening, and writing, um, just by using the English online course. So you can see pictures from different students along the country. Um, well, my presentation is based on the individual capacity building because once I finished the program and uh, came back, 
um, I started to have a lot of um, certifications, diplomas, new ideas, new projects, because this experience uh, changed completely my perspective on my teaching performance. So, for example, uh, I got pro I got a promotion. I I was promoted as a local English coordinator in my hometown for one year. General publications, uh, regional, local, and national. In relation to my experience in in uh, South Korea, I got some certifications. Like I improved my English proficiency. So. I got C1 on Cambridge certification, uh, a diploma as uh, the first teacher of leadership, um, another diploma for my remarkable performance on my teacher evaluation process, getting one of the highest levels, uh, because in Chile, the Ministry of Education assess teachers every four years. Um, some um, membership, I've got a membership of Red Maestros de Maestros that uh, is like a group of teachers from collaboratively to improve um, the equity and quality of education in my country. Uh, I enrolled in some training programs related to collaborative work and leadership, English national curriculum, assessment learning, neuroscience, and currently the universal design of learning and inclusion. I got some institution invitations, um, Virtual Educa 2017, to show the English online course. Uh, I was invited to some English teachers network in 2019. And lastly, I was invited to the Global Talk 2020 together with my colleague Maria Bernarda Verdugo. And we also receive things like, for example, the U.S. Embassy donation. It was two robots for learning English through programming. So it was a really a successful experience. We succeed as a team working collaboratively. So that's why I attached some pictures of my colleagues working walls. Um, so we started in my school. Uh, but then we projected to the whole community and then to the whole country. Uh, I didn't work alone. <laughs> so I need to acknowledge some people, some institutions, thanks to the Ministry of Education, because they give me the opportunity as a teacher to work on research, to travel abroad, um, together with my colleague Marcela, that she right now is in Australia, is go on studying. Uh, thanks to the English Open Doors program, to my English coordinator, because uh, they, were, they were always supporting me, to the APEC learning program. Please uh, go on with it, because uh, you are, you are uh, helping a lot of kids, students, and so on, to the local authorities, to my former boss, uh, Mrs. Fabiola Retamal, my current boss, Cesar Chambles, to my colleagues from my school and from my hometown, uh, obviously, and especially to my students, to the ALT team, lovely ALT team on that time, uh, to the 39th round participants, I still had contact with them. Um, a special acknowledgement to my family for the support. So it's an um, like individual um, learning building that we collaboration. And I want to finish my presentation uh, with one picture that I took at the Seoul Tower in 2017. When I look through entry name, <laughs> capital flag, and how far away I was from home, uh, and one C.S. Lewis quote came to my mind. He's a British writer. Like, hardships prepare common people to an extraordinary destiny. My destiny was uh the APEC learning training program in 2017. Um, so I want to send some greetings <laughs> to my
my family, my colleagues, and especially to my friends from uh, Bienestar Group. Greetings for them. And that's all. Um, terima kasih. Kamsanida. Thank you. And muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Ms. Lua, for the useful presentation. We truly saw how uh, AELT contributed to your individual uh, professional growth, such as the promotion from an English teacher, school teacher, to a regional English coordinator. We truly wish that the English Open Doors program, which was the ninth round of AELT, could serve its role in Chile and help the Chilean teachers and students to further improve their English skills. Next, we'll invite Mr. Joseph Santos, Educational Supervisor, Department of Education, the Philippines. He has attended the 27th AELT in 2013. Mr. Santos says that the year he joined the AELT program is also the same year when the Marikina City in the Philippines of the e-learning program. In this connection, we'll see how Marikina City has been developing its e-learning system for seven years. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. We seem to have a little technical issue here, but uh, we hope that best. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning to uh, our uh, uh, distinguished uh, guest, uh, Ms. Kim Dazon, Ms. Park Yung Jung, uh, Director Ko Yung Yoon, Professor Park Dos Dong Soon, and uh, the member economy, and to my fellow alumni, and of course, uh, to Dr. Margarita Balesteros, a pleasant morning to everyone. To our experience here in uh, the Philippines, your internet. Um, so my 2013 e-learning program experience uh, was very uh, fruitful. So here are some ceremonies and uh, some lectures together with my co-participants. And part of it, we have a good cultural experience. Then um, we have also a field study by going to some of the schools uh, in, in Seoul, Korea, Samsung. Now in the closing program, we are very uh, fortunate no, that our group uh, got the best project team uh, entitled e-learning program. So when I uh, uh, go back to the Philippines, I immediately get the program and uh, proposed it to my superior. The title of the project was the Division e-learning program, an alternative delivery mode for 21st uh, century learners. Now, the rationale for this is, of course, no, to uh, widen learners as well as the teachers to quality-based basic education through integration of ICT and modern technology. And, of course, to uh, address the problem on classroom congestion and other situations and circumstances, which prevents children from going to and uh, staying in school. And of course, it paid. Now, here is the objectives of the program to provide learning opportunities to teachers and learners anytime, anywhere. So prepare them for the knowledge-based economy, offer opportunities to teachers and learners to indulge in ICT integration in the teaching and learning process. Allow teachers and learners to cope with the fast-changing technology knowledge and skills in ICT and of course help our students to save money, time and effort in going to school. Here is the conceptual framework, the e-learner or the learners as the center of it. Then we have the five-year plan which started from 2013 to 2017. Now, uh, at uh, present, it is mainly offered in uh, two schools uh, in the division, Jesus de la Peña National High School and Marquina Science High School. 
Now, the most important milestone is that uh, it was implemented at Marikina Science High School for seven years and uh, at Jesus de la Peña National High School for six years. Jesus de la Peña National High School for the, uh, uh, to be uh, the e-learning uh, center of the division. Now, uh, with the recent uh, COVID uh, pandemic, the program was expanded to the rest of the 14 secondary schools as part of the learning continuity plan of the division. Now, um, going back to year 2013, the program at Romarquina last uh, June 2013. And during this time, it was implemented in four pilot schools. Uh, we have the Marikina Science High School, Tanyong High School, Fortune High School, and Parang High School with eight selected e-teachers from various schools. Then we also conducted the training of e-teachers at the division office with an external consultant or expert on e-learning. Here are some of the pictures. But in 2014, again, no, we established uh, a school to be the center of uh, e-learning, which is the Jesus de la Peña National High School. And uh, in this year also, we established MENT system platform and website for the said program. Here is some. Uh, here are some of the pictures of the Jesus de la Peña National High School with its facilities. And here is the Division eLearning website, www.elearningmarikina.ph. And here is the Division eLearning uh, Management uh, System. Year 2015, again, we continuously conducted the capability training for e-teachers and e-designers. And of course, uh, conduct advocacy campaign at various elementary schools for us to uh, recruit uh, e-learner or learners from elementary. Then e-designers and e-teachers were given laptops by our local government unit. Then uh, various SDO conducted benchmarking activity. Here are some of the pictures. 2016, we introduced Flip Classroom and we also continuously uh, upgrades the platform. And in this year, we partnered with NSD, a South Korean based company for the benchmarking of the implementation of the program. We also uh, uh, used their UBT or ubiquitous based learning uh, program. Here's some of the picture. 2017, we introduced to our students the ubiquitous learning. We also conducted the uh, online uh, examination using the program. The validation of the uploaded learning materials through LR unit was conducted by the validation team per learning area. 2018, we partnered with Globe and Marikina government for the provisions of tablets and development of e-learning resource center and we implemented the digitized periodic test using the tablet in all grade levels at the SEDS. 2019, uh, we proposed the expansion plan for the other non-e-learning secondary schools. Then we enhanced the standard materials in the e-learning platform. Now, uh, 1,000 e-learners graduated from this program. Uh, this year, uh, digitized learning uh, plan uh, was uh, standardized. Then uh, there are there uh, the development is ongoing, which is phase two. And again, we continuously up, uh, up, uh, upgraded the platform features. Now, allow me to uh, share with you a video which we used as 
ad, uh, as an advocate program. Mr. is not coming, so can we play the video on our side? It would be grateful if you could stop the uh, share, yes, feature, and we could play our video. The Division E-Learning Program is one of the alternative delivery modes offered by the division to provide options for learners in availing educational services. E-learning refers to the use of internet or wireless technologies to deliver a broad array of e-learning solutions. E-learners are materials from a computer via internet. To properly use the platform, you need to communicate communicate and communicate. The learners of the today's generation are able to adapt easily in the e-learning environment and maximize information and communication technology to apply actual matters to real life situations. Malaking bagay ang pagkakaroon ng isang paaralan sa isang syudad na may program ng e-learning. Lubos ang naitutulong ito lalo na sa mga mag sa pagpasok sa paaralan o kaya naman sa tinatawag nating uh, distansya sa kanilang mga tahanan. Of course, the learning program is very helpful for students. Admittedly, the learning program became beneficial to me as a teacher because it helped me to become adept in using modern technologies in my classroom. The assessments that I give online generate automatic results once the students have Now, uh, especially to me, I have modeled uh, uh, the program I have here in the Philippines to your country. Thank you very much. I'm Thank you very much, Mr. Joseph Santos. We were deeply impressed by the SDO Marikina City's annual e-learning program milestone. We're happy that the AELT program has served as a platform for you to be connected with the Korean government, educational institutions, and the Korean EduTech company. It just reminds us that the aim of the AELT is educational cooperation in the Asia Pacific region. In this connection, we wish you all the best and send our warm regards for the e-learning advancement in the Philippines. I have uh, checked in the YouTube live chat while uh, watching the presentations, and we deeply appreciate all the um, speakers for your wonderful presentations. So if you have any comments and ideas to add, please use the YouTube live chat also. Our third speaker is Professor Nina Galak at University of Santo Tomas in the Philippines. She is an alumni from the fifth AELT in 2007. She provides support to the international Cooperation Department at the Department of Education, the Philippines, and serves as an administrative official at the University of Santa Thomas. So please welcome her with a warm round of applause. Thank you very much, Ms. Dasom Kim, Park, the APEC HR, the Lead Shepherd, representatives from the Ministry of Education of the Republic of Korea, Dr. Yong Hun Ko and Deputy Director Ms. Aram Kim, representatives from the different ministers of education of the different APEC countries or economies, uh, Dr. Luzman Smancin, 
the Chief of Ministry of Education of Thailand, and our very own Dr. Margarita Ballesteros, the Director of an Office of the Philippines. Um, dear IAS staff and managers, fellow AELT alumni and um, co-presenters, and other guests, a pleasant good morning to each and everyone. To you is about my experiences as an alumni of AELT and how I have been trying to help um, the Philippine government in its, um, in its pursuing or enforcing quality education in the Philippines. My experience as an AELT started way back 2007. I belong to the fifth round of AELT. And during that time, I was representatives from the Philippines coming from the basic education, um, the um, um, middle high school or um, the, the, the junior and the senior high school and um, the tertiary education and the postgraduate education. Uh, these representatives also public and private uh, institutions in the Philippines. During that time, um, although I'm a professor at the University of Santo Tomas, I was not representing uh, USD that time, but I was representing the Philippine E-Learning Society. Uh, the Philippine E-Learning Society is a national organization for um, the enthusiasts and the technology can help um, in the development of the country. Philippine E-Learning Society was initiated by the Office of the President of the Philippines. During our time, um, AELT has three basic, um, basic objectives with the general objective, of course, of narrowing the digital divide and enhancing the quality of education. And they say that um, AELT during that time was very successful in providing as customized e-learning training program. So uh, the training program that was customized and given to us are actually training programs catered to us in participants and to us participants also coming from our own um, economy. Um, AELT also is very successful during that time in disseminating the academic achievements of the Republic of Korea on e-learning practices because way back in 2007, we can say that Korea is so much uh, discussing and talking about ubiquitous learning. And we during that time, we are not yet in that um, stage. And, but but um, the Republic of Korea during that time is really so advanced that um, even the education system students or young students in the elementary grade are provided with one is to one um, personal computer. Um, the AELT during that time operation by sharing cultural experiences. It was a 10 day experience for us um, we, we met, of course, and um, networking, of course, we have new friends during that time coming from no other than, of course, the Republic of Korea, from China, Thailand, Indonesia, and Russia. So it, it was a very good experience for all of us. Um, in that experience, of course, it's not only about knowledge, learning, it's not only about concepts and ideas, but it is also about the new technologies. It's about the future of education and the future direction. So we had a wider pers perspective actually of the e-learning and e-learning in education. Um, during that training as well, we learned the different policies and practices in Korea. But we learned only not from Korea, but we also learned about the practices from the different economies that have participated in that training. So the train, we were exposed to many places and um, many different um, offices in, in Korea, in Busan that time. So we visited the Office of Education, we visited Keris as well. Um, we had, uh, we met the mayor, we even visited the APEC house, and I'm sure that the participants also of the AELT experienced the same cultural and the same uh, traditions, the Korean friends. 
So of course, the last day is about um, culminating and closing activity for us. So in a nutshell, from uh, the objective of narrowing the digital divide and enhancing the quality of education in the APEC region, of course, that has been achieved to a great extent for me. And me as an AELT alumni, what I could say is that it has improved me actual skills. And um, with that training, actually, not only the managerial skills, but that strategic thinking and innovation uh, we, we can learn a lot as to how Koreans are doing it, um, sharing their best practices uh, to us while we record the realization that we cannot do it alone. I cannot do it alone, or we Philippines cannot do it alone. That we need, of course, to involve the stakeholders for such gigantic strategic thinking. That stakeholders' engagement is a challenge and that opportunities to connect and establish um, education alliances and networks and sustaining collaborative relationships with stakeholders is not an easy job, especially if you're not a government official, a private institution maybe, or you are no longer an administrator from an academic institution. And I would say that uh, it boils down actually to the realities of life that me as a teacher after um, saying um, enough for administrative positions, and I, I focus on say that what I can do most is actually to be an instructional leader myself, to be a model in my own uh, self as a teacher. That is to promote education, to promote e-learning, and the use of technology in my classes. In my own simple, humble way, I have given my commitment to education and its advancement. That's the fifth bullet in the slide, or the fifth plot. It's my personal commitment as a responsible citizen of uh, my economy and of this world. So to support what I think and what I believe could address the needs of today and that of tomorrow. So what after the AELT training? So. After the EELT training, um, of course, I went back to the Philippines. And com coming back to the Philippines as a representative of the Philippine E-Learning Society with full of new ideas and hope of uh, what else and what must be done for my economy, I, together with my fellow AELT um, um, participants during that time, we brought home with us the output that we had developed and submitted to IAs for the Philippine education. That is to improve, it's a plan on how to improve the Philippine ICT utilization. My development and implementation of the said plan. PELS or the Philippine e Learning Society, as I have mentioned, is a national organization. Unfortunately, when I came back in 2008, that's the last um, term for me because we have a maximum number of term as board director. So the plan was left with the president and the same time the University of Santo Tomas has been recalling me and um, to focus more on administrative positions in the university as it is nearing the quadricentennial or the 400 year celebration of the university during the time. As an advocate of technology since the late 80s, my passion to push the use of technology to advance education was placed then into a higher level of expectation because of the AELT training. So I have been teaching for the last 30 years and my contributions for the last 30 years, I would say is that I have taught at least to produce two commissioners at least and many medical doctors and PhDs and many teachers, pharmacy, sociologists, businessmen. And I have mentored at least 550 researches um, produced by my mentees or my students. We have initiated, facilitated numerous seminars and trainings and conferences, uh, published books and OERs and uh, contributed also that we have an OER or I myself have an OE, has an OER now with uh, Simeosco and with UPTV. I would say that in all of these 
teaching. I have been teaching my students and teaching them how to teach technology. I still remember during my early years of teaching, teaching my students basic computing and um, I, I even bring my computer part by part in, in the university as during that time, the technology that time. Some of my experiences, and I would say some contributions, during my time as administrator in the University of Santo Tomas, I have handled several uh, positions in the university. And I'm proud to say that I think I have uh, contributed uh, um, maybe a lot and enough for me, and I can say no anymore to uh, an administrative position in the university. Um, I was able to get um, a training program under UNESCO. So the university is considered as one of the training institutions under UNESCO. I have also a partnership with the National Commission for Culture and Arts, UPOU. Um, we had some projects, um, the Commission on Higher Education and TESDA. I have helped TESDA in its initial uh, distance uh, in, in its initial offering of distance um, learning courses for its uh, TVET or vocational uh, courses in DepEd, of course, and even the Society for Filipino. Some of the partners and some of the groups that I have worked with, and I have produced several uh, instructional materials, and the instructional materials ranges, actually, these are some examples. What you can see are some examples. Um, it ranges from promoting the Philippines, the culture of the Philippines, the, the festivities of the Philippines, to environment, health uh, promotion of food, etc., and um, others, even the way of living, so social concerns. So we have produced this, um, and these are available. They are standalone uh, materials that we have produced. Um, as as an, uh, equipped with so many ideas, of course, coming from and learned from the AELT training, I have initiated the e-learning program of the university, and it has helped me. The training actually has helped me a lot. The um, the tra the e-learning program of the university is known as the e-learning program or the ELIP. And now it is known as no longer a program because it's an institutionalized application and it is being uh, enjoyed by more than 50,000 students and more than 2,700 faculty members from the university. Um, I have initiated and established the USD Tiger Radio serving the whole campus on news activities and others. And this is actually a training ground for um, mass communication students and other aspiring students who would like to be future radio or TV announcers. Um, currently, the USD Tiger Radio is being aired online to serve it's not available only in the campus, but it is available outside. I have managed and administered many development projects, online project management and database works fine with me. Um, I still remember that as a project manager or project officer of the university, I had seven staff during that time and at least 250 projects a year. And managing 250 projects that ranges from institutional faculty development activities. So it's difficult to, to provide a faculty development for 2,700 uh, teachers or, or faculty. To, um, uh, construction of buildings to renovation. So all sorts of those big projects are the university. And thanks to the different uh, ideas that uh, the training that AELT has provided to us, the exposure actually that it has given us when uh, we were doing the touring around Busan, uh, we many different possibilities. So um, these are some of the contributions that I have done because during that time it's a simultaneous, sometimes it's a simultaneous administrative position for me. As a researcher, of course, uh, as a researcher, I have um, contributed also 
um, my, I have a with Rutledge Publishing. I have another publication with UNESCO on competency-based teaching training on ICT integration. Um, APEC Education Community for Education. Um, it's about the in-service teacher training in APEC member economies, and I presented the Philippines for that one. That is my part as an APEC study uh, researcher. Activities and in the 550 researches that I have mentored with my advices with my students, I would say that most of these researchers researches are actually about um, assessment and technology, the implementation of using technology in the teaching, learning of the like. Um, when I, I said no to an administrative position in the university and I went back as a full-time faculty, that is the time that the industry, of course, because of networks, we have friends and they asked me to help them also in, in the Philippine development. And that time I accepted um, the offer of the Vibal Publishing, one of the biggest publishing company in the Philippines. So I was with them for five years. And in that five years, I would say that I was able to do a lot um, for the Philippine education. As I have initiated and developed a learning manual for the Philippines in which the learning materials are incorporated. We have, um, I have contributed and pioneered in the development of the interactive e-textbooks in the Philippines. I have facilitated at least 180 trainings on ICT, e-learning, technology, and education to teachers, administrators during my company. I have facilitated the development of interactive textbooks, printed textbooks, um, games, apps, and the development of the DQS. So a DQS is um, disaster quest application game for UNICEF. Um, I have to leave the publishing company because that will be a conflict of interest as the um, Commission on Higher Education, that is the equivalent of the MOE of higher education in the Philippines. As you know, the education system in the Philippines have the DepEd for the basic education, we have TESDA for the Tibet, and we have uh, CHED or the Commission on Higher Education for the tertiary and postgraduate levels. I was appointed as technical panel for transnational education and distance education and heavily it uses technology again. So I, I have to leave the, the consultancy work with Vibal Publishing uh, and focus with my serving the Commission on Higher Education because that will be a conflict of interest for me. Um, the, the, the experience also is that we as policy makers, because uh, AELT also exposed us to different policies and practices, as I have mentioned earlier. So I had that experience and a wider perspective of the different policy in the different economies um, in the APEC region. So um, it took me some time to think, and I tried to join um, an international organization it's a multinational company in the USA as the consultant, and uh, they gave me actually the position knowledge management director. Um, um, in that company, I initiated and designed an LMS for multinational company, and our clients during that time are United Nations, offices and sectors under United Nations. We have um, the big uh, pharmaceutical companies, including the different uh, branches that they have or country branches that they have. Um, ADB is also, or the Asian Development Bank was our um, client at that time. I have expanded the business worldwide because during that time, um, we have several management and one of the businesses there is that um, we, um, we actually are the biggest, um, the biggest source of English online teachers in uh, the Asia Pacific and as far as the, so from 10 English teachers, I was able to expand it to 200 English teachers 
um, within that span of two years. So it, it was a very good experience for me because um, it uses technology. Um, by publishing company, I forgot to mention to you that we patterned actually the model of uh, Vibal uh, publishing on its textbooks and um, uh, digitization of books from Keris. So Vibal, the, um, the, the president of to Korea just to study and meet uh, the people from Keris and, and try to understand. And um, Vibal Publishing is now a partner of Keris because of this one. So um, with Chad or the Commission on Higher Education, my my appointment as member of the Chad Technical Panel for Transnational and Distance Education also um, gave me the way or paved the way for me to be appointed as member of the Chad Technical Working Group for Flexi Pandemic. Um, I'm also a member of the UNESCO Philippine Open Educational Resource and a task force for educate, uh, teacher education member of the UNESCO Southeast Asia. CLASD STEMU, and sometimes we represent the commission on some important activities related to technology. So with this, um, my participation is that um, I have crafted or I have joined in the crafting of the implementing rules and regulations of the Republic Act 10650, often or otherwise known as the Open Distance Learning Act. We have revised and created policies also for the commission, as is the CHED regional and other, and, and other um, higher education institutions on how to go about flexible learning, especially during this time of pandemic. Sorry about that. We have conducted several public hearings and some several public orientation seminars, workshops, and others and other activities related to our function. To interrupt yeah. because we have limited time. Uh, shall we wrap up this presentation? Could you go to okay. the last slide and show maybe the conclusion part? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. So um, we have participated. Uh, we have participated in so many activities and in 20, thank, thank you to the department in our uh, Department of Education nominated me to um, attend a big forum in Korea, uh, in, in Lima, Peru. And because of that, um, I was reconnected again with um, IAs. And we realized that many Filipinos actually participate in the different e-learning activities. And many of these participants cannot be, um, we lost, we lost data because of loose data management and uh, we lost information about them. And it's because of the monitoring system um, also. So there are so many projects, concepts, and ideas that are put to waste and not maximized. If only those trained participants will contribute in there, then we will never be left behind. So that's a realization for me and Dr. Margarita that we have created the Facebook uh, page trying to map and trace all the trainees. And we try to promote and support all the e-learning activities of the Ministry of uh, South Korea. And um, that is hosted and managed by IAs and they participate in all activities as much as, so promote schools and managers and leaders also of the Philippines, because in participating in these activities, we can also promote uh, best practices in the use of technology in, in the Philippines. We also conduct activities related to e-learning the, in the Philippines in cooperation with the International Cooperation Office of the Department of Let me fast track my um, presentation. So these are some of the events that we have participated and um, supported. So in all of the events, we have been very, um, very supportive now and very visible. And to follow up also on our alumni and on our um, participants from the different um, trainings provided by IAs. So these are some of the presentations. And of course, Mr. Joseph Santos, my colleague here as co-presenter is one of the highlights of that. And I think I have reported that also, uh, Mr. Uh, 
presentation. So Alco Philippines in the Philippines is now supported, uh, is now supporting UNICEF and DepEd. So we are now in the list of the primary supporters of um, UNICEF and DepEd. So I would say in brief that from 2007, 18, 2016 is reconnecting and 2020 is soaring high. Unfortunately, because of the COVID-19, um, it was not um, that easy for us and our activities were hampered. So some might be asking, why am I doing this? Because I'm doing this because I'm doing this and I am not paid for doing this. Means that Well, I enjoy traveling and I can travel. And for me, I can still call it work because the university excuses me from my absences whenever I have travels. So... I get to work with amazing colleagues and we get insights actually into a lot of other worlds as we listen and discuss with people of vibrant and innovative ideas. And with that, we get to have other community. We get to indulge in and share our passions. And of course, I would say uh, I become a better teacher with so much to share with my students and my colleagues because of these experiences. Thank you very much, Professor Kalaka. We have to absolutely agree with your idea that our international partnership collaboration is beneficial for everyone. And as we have rich experience in teaching college students as well as the e-learning consultations domestically and internationally. So if you'd like to uh, have the contact with her and exchange information with her, please leave the YouTube live chat. Uh, we'll uh, be happy to connect with you the, to the international uh, um, e-learning experts and our uh, grow our networks. So our last speaker is Dr. Suras Kangasabai, Assistant Director, Ministry of Education, Malaysia, Brown alumni uh, in 2019. He has the doctoral degree in the media management and explores on the subject such as should physical textbook be replaced by the packaged digital materials. Interesting, isn't it? So uh, let's hear his presentation, which focuses on the issue of the delayed deployment of interactive digital textbook. Let us welcome Dr. Suraj Kangasabai. And I'm Dr. Suraj from Malaysia. Uh, when we went to Korea last year, we were comprised of two, three people in our, three person in our team. That's me, Nche Mama Azian, and Nche Fazli, as you can see in the slide, uh, to our whole problem that we were, ah, and then this is my resume, my occupation, my work experience, and my education. I have a doctorate in uh, media management. And when we went to Korea in 2019, the overall objective, interactive digital textbook nationwide within the allocated period stated in the Malaysian educational blueprint in order to provide students with quality digital content. And we had a specific idea that, of course, time efficient manner will have four parts. The first one will be introduction, background, and justification. Now, the, in the introduction, I would like to mention here, of course, our, our, our core problem was the deployment of the textbook. But I'll have another part that is the education TV that we learn from Korea. I will talk about it later also in my book. They come in, which will come in during the outcome and experience of training. And number three will be generate an action, uh, execute action plan, and finally future plan and monitoring. Now, first we look at the outcome and experiences of training. Well, uh, lecture, we had workshop sharing, Field training, cultural experiences, experience, coll collaborative studies, and international experience. I'll show you some of the photos there in this slide that was that was taken during the event in Korea. Now back to our T T B D and also Chris, and then the current state the workshop sharing may. Uh, e-learning. Yes, most of the country they came up with 
different. Even though everyone had a different problem to solve in uh, in their country when they came to Korea, but some or other they were all uh, linked, all tied up to e-learning. So a lot to pick up from them, and uh, we had discussion, brainstorming session. We learn how people have dealt with their problem. Some had very very challenging situations like no internet, then no budget, even government support was very very low, and of course some countries have some political instability. Okay, uh, that is uh, sharing my part of the. Uh, okay. Now, what we and ASEAN, we came back and we had to generate and execute the action plan. And what we did was this. First, we created a multimedia production team and then we did a bit of compiling and formatting, type, procurement process and deployment in all schools. Okay, you can see the photos. Uh, my team of creative production was also joined by my colleagues in TV, like you can see in the photo there, which is Sharol, which is one, and the other photos you can see there, the procurement team and all those there. Okay, what came out, and we, we also had a project management thing, uh, and also uh, partnership with uh, our multimedia university and Mara Technology University in Malaysia. All right, then, well, all the details, all the information gathered was put together, and finally, okay, we uh, digital textbook interactive portal. Digital textbook, this is the portal. We managed to produce the, the a team four titles, and you can see that the first one is Bahasa Melayu, the mathematics, the science, and the geography. The Bahasa Melayu is Malaysian national language for the uh, form three, which is grade nine in Malaysia. All right, so the, uh, having done all that, uh, and at the moment, we have deployed the textbook to uh, throughout the country, and of course, test run is, happening, take, is also taking place and meetings of meetings, uh, meetings after meetings are uh, being conducted to, to for the betterment of this digital literary textbook. But uh, there's a different team working on it now, and even now while I'm talking here, they are in the meeting trying to solve. We will solve all this now. I would like to also extend my experience in Korea to a second part of my 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 work or my my core business in Ministry of Education. That is Education TV. You all know somewhere in March 2019, uh, all the countries in the world were attacked by COVID thing, and we had. Uh, before that, I would like to add that. While we were in Korea, we were taken to Open Cyber University of Korea, and we had a very good experience on production of educational program there. All right. And back to our country, we have to go uh, online learning, and one of the mode that we have to go is Education TV. That's our minister there, you can see, and Education TV has to be up again. Website, we have been testing. So what we do, we, we have experience, but since we thought, we saw in Korea these things, I personally got hold with our Dasung King and Ms. Park and asked them for extension of whatever we learned there. And I would like to thank them because they managed to get me through to Ms. Miju Wang in Open Cyber University. And you can see this is the video conference that we had with Korea. That's trying to get knowledge on how to uh, go about this education TV. And then 
we had the discussion. We have uh, our team there with Miss JNT, the moderator, and we started producing, producing TV programs. We learned a lot. Okay, what we did was we had some collaboration with EBS, that's Educational Broadcast System of Korea, and we pick up the the way. We customize what we learn from there and we put it here. And we started producing. Okay, this is our team here and this is our web, webcaster. And then this is all photos about our team production. Okay, so I would like to thank the whole Korean team for two things that we, I, I personally get that uh, gain from the trip to Korea and the whole 45 ELT. Number one was the digital tech uh, planning and uh, solving the problem. Yes, we picked up a lot of points. We managed to solve the problem. It's not totally solved, but I would say that it has come to the 95% uh, of perfection. Uh, it cannot be 100 yet. It will soon be. And of course, the second part, experience with Korean people or my Korean team there is the education TV, how they help us. Book, that is, we have to uh, do this, uh, extend the textbook to special needs students and of course, advanced technology elements such as virtual and augmented reality should be put in and also, has to be up and doing well. With that, I would like to say a big thank you for the opportunity uh, to big thank you to the Korean team, Ms. Park and Ms. Kim Dawson team, and also our honorable speakers, Dong Sul Park and Director Yong Hun Ko, for all the opportunities given, and also like to work together with you guys in future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Steve McAfee, Dr. Suraz, for your wonderful presentation. E-learning policy is associated with the Malaysian education policy, specifically on the utilization of digital textbook. The AELT will continue its role, providing the blueprints of educational policies and exemplary cases in the Asia Pacific. Once again, let us give a big round of applause to the YouTube live chat. Please uh, have the clap, clap, clap emojis, emoticons on the live chat uh, reply. So we will now proceed with the panelist discussion. Uh, for the panelist discussion, we have three questions. So I will ask uh, each of the speakers the question. The first question is, from your AELT experience, which session is most helpful and supportive for your achievement? This question is directed to Ms. Uloa. So as we know, the AELT is composed of the special lectures, site visit, collaborative study session, forum, and so on. So which session has been most helpful, Ms. Uloa? Please unmute yourself so we can hear your voice beautiful voice and clear voice. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I would say it's collaborative because it provided the um, interpersonal problem solving and communication skills that I didn't have before my experience. And I would say that collaboration is the key of such to succeed on any institution, organization, company, enterprise. I would say it's like the key to open any door. Thank you very much. That was very clear that uh, the AELT needs the teamwork, not an individual work. So the second question is, as AELT alumni, what would you recommend for future AELT participants to prepare? The second question is directed to Mr. Santos from the Philippines. Mr. Santos. Hi. Uh, if you will participate in this program, of course, you have to be ready in uh, terms of sharing uh, your ideas. And of course, uh, you have to work as a team and don't hesitate to ask questions and, uh, and share all your thoughts to other uh, participants. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Sun. Quest is always right. The questioning uh, and answering, having the feedback, those are very important parts of the AELT program. So your answers will help our future AELT participants to think about what to prepare when they join the program. The third question is, do you have any comments and compliments to the Ministry of Education in Republic of Korea? As we know, the MOE Korea has been seen years. So we'd like to invite Dr. Shiraz and Professor Kalaka to briefly um, say uh, the words of the gratitude and et cetera uh, to the Ministry of Education in Republic of Korea. So Dr. Shiraz first. Okay, thank you, Ms. Kim. Uh, uh, visit the Republic, uh, Ministry of Education, Korea. We did uh, visit them. And we can see that how this Ministry of Education, Korea is supporting the whole AELT. Uh, congratulate them on this effort. Yeah, they bring the world together there and to uh, and pick up a lot of knowledge when we come back to our countries to either implement or customize it to according to our country's needs and situation. So a big thank you to the Ministry of Education and keep up the good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. We absolutely agree that we need good policies and good implementation. So uh, last words is up to Professor Kalaka. Uh, what would you like to say to the Ministry of Education in Republic of Korea? All beautiful words and gratitude of thanks, gratitude of the of education of the Republic of Korea for being a very good brother um, to us, the, the member economies, um, for helping us and letting us grow with you. You are not uh, leaving us behind. Thank you so much for all the opportunities that you are giving us. Rest, rest assured that we are here um, and, and we are learn a lot from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Kalaka, for the kind words. Yes, all means all, and nobody should be left behind in this uh, new normal era uh, when the digital divide is becoming serious. So thank you very much once again for all the presenters uh, for your wonderful answers and the panelists' questions. Give them a big round of applause. Uh, in the YouTube live chat, please also leave the reply. So now maybe this is the time that you have been waiting for. It is called the AELT YouTube A. A few days after the alumni event, we'll do the lucky draw of our participants and send out the small, small gifts for your active participation from Korea. It is called the K-Edu Prize, which is supported by the Ministry of Education, Republic of Korea. But before we begin the quiz, we have one favor to ask you. As you can see from the slide, please leave your name, position, organization, and chat box so we can identify who you are. And if you are an alumni, please also indicate the round and or the year that you have attended the AELT program. But if you are a prospective AELT participant, please leave us why you'd like to join this program. And while you are typing, I would like to invite you to read the slide contents. They are the big hint for the upcoming quiz. There will be a total of four questions with the multiple choice. And we would like to, you to type out the answers. For instance, maybe our uh, program specialist Eugene and Hyun can help us show the example. So if sure of the question one is one, then you can just leave one. And then uh, if the answer for question two is five, you can leave five and etc. So please read uh, the hint carefully and review the contents. Perhaps the words in the red color are extremely important keywords. They have the information about the AELT and what you need to So, Are we ready to begin the quiz or shall we wait? Begin. So let's move on to the next slide and the quiz is here. You need to think about and type the answers in the live chat box. 
Um, we have four questions on the screen. Uh, the first question is, when was the first round of AELT held? So for your information, in 2005, when Korea had the uh, honor of host economy of APAC ministerial meeting in Busan city. So mm, it will be after 2005. And the second question, as of 2020 held, here's the top hint. Due to the COVID-19, we had to conduct the 47th and 48th rounds of AELT virtually this year. So there you can guess the answer. And the third question, what is the project name that the Ministry of Education of Republic of Korea implements to advance the e-learning policies and practices? AELT is also a part of this Korean governmental project. Will number options three, one and three be the answers? Hmm, they are the true statement that they are the project names, but maybe there is a better answer. And the fourth question, where were the previous AELT alumni days have been held? Before the global pandemic, the APAC e-learning training center has reached out to our alumni in APAC member economies and conducted the face-to-face -face meetings. Yes, but this year, Dara, uh, we are now hosting this alumni day virtually. Well, we wish the dark cloud of COVID-19 would be lifted and the situation gets better so we can meet you uh, person to person. So I think that was about one minute, right? Everybody had a chance to type out the answers. Wow, wow, I see the replies line up. So with this, let's move on to the answer slide. Now it's time for us to check the answers. The first question's answer is year 2006. The se second answer is a total of 48 rounds. The third one was a little bit tricky, wasn't it? The correct answer is option two, e-learning globalization project. And the fourth one, the answer is all. Since 2016, we have had the annual A member economies. So thank you very much for your sincere participation. And in the upcoming years, we look forward to cooperate and collaborate with more and more APAC member economies. Well, we wish you the best for the lucky draw. For the selected answers, we'll send you the emails and notify that you are the selected winners of the special prize. So we are now coming close to the end of the alumni day. To officially announce the closing of the alumni day, let us invite Director Go Young-hoon for the closing remarks. Go Young-hoon uh, oversees the e-learning policies and practices in Korea. So please welcome him with a big round of applause. Dear distinguished AELT alumni, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great 28 e-learning training program, Alumni Day. We have invited distinguished AELT alumni from our 12 partner member economies and shared the program highlights. The program has been operated for more than 10 years with your sincere interest and dedication. In this appreciate everyone who has contributed to the program's success and growth. Also, we had heard from four featured AELT alumni. They are Ms. Stephanie Loa from Chile, Mr. Joseph Santos from the Philippines Department of Education, Professor Ninia Kalakaf, Thomas University, and Dr. Shures Kankasbai from the Malaysian, Malaysian Ministry of Education. Each and every presentation was meaningful in that we could exchange not only the personal experience, but also information concerning APEC member economies, e-learning policies, and practices. In this regard, 
I A E L P alumni for your hard work and efforts as an e-learning policymakers and professionals. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the true meaning behind the AELT program is not only developing individual competencies, but also developing practical e-learning policies, plans, and strategies for APEC. The building program contributes to the expansion of the innovative teaching and learning method with effective ICT utilization in 12 one APEC member economies. Contributed to the sharing of the e-learning trends and impact of ICT in the school curriculum. As we could observe, the COVID-19 pandemic has left us a negative impact, but the COVID-19 is also the integration of digital education globally. E-learning has tremendous potentiality to expand teaching and learning, transform educational settings and drive inclusive and sustainable socioeconomic growth. Thus, I would like to, I would like AELT alumni to conditional competencies and devote yourselves into e-learning policy and practice development. Finally, on behalf, the, on behalf of the Korean Ministry of Education, I would like to also emphasize and reiterate our efforts on e-learning development, such as the e-learning globalization project and digital green new deal policies, among others. Lastly, the Korean Ministry of Education is open to cooperate with our APEC member economies and ready to share our know-how with you. Let us connect with each other and draw innovation in the APEC. I sincerely hope that today's 2020 AELT Alumni Day would be the starting point of our professional development human networking and continued partnership. Thank you very much for your kind attendance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Go. We hope that the AELT will be the hope for APEC member economies to develop better e-learning policies. And at the last, as you emphasized, uh, we hope that the AELT would serve its role to uh, serve uh, to have the platform for the APEC's uh, e-learning uh, exemplary cases. So the AELT is successfully implemented with the cooperation between ministries and departments. In this connection, we would like to invite Dr. Margarita Ballesteros from the Department of Education, the Philippines, to give the appreciation remarks on behalf of our 12 e-learning partner economies. Let us warmly welcome her. Good morning, everyone. Um, Professor Dongsun Park, the chairman of IAS. Director Yu Hong Ko, the e-learning division of MOE Korea. Professor Ninia, Dr. Suras, Dr. Luxman of MOE Thailand. Ms. Dalsong, um, our program specialist of IAs. Economists present here and our colleagues and friends from Chile and all over the world who are with us right now viewing us online bringing you warm greetings, to we say in the Philippines, Mabuhay. And uh, thank you for inviting us this morning to, to join you for this very special day in gathering all ALTers, or we you call them the ALTers. Philippines have been a member of the Asia Pacific Economic since the time it was, it was established in 1989 by its founding member economies. Since then, the country has been actively involved in various initiatives and partnerships aimed at developing the Asia Pacific region of economics, business and trade, but also in capacity building and educational programs. 
As COVID-19 ravaged more across the globe, the role of ICT in our day-to-day -day living has been significantly highlighted and elevated. As others would say, the hastening of the fourth industrial revolution and its effect to education. And with this, policymakers invested more of their time addressing humongous demands emanating from the field. Here in the Philippines, it could the vision offices and from the schools as well. The pandemic has forced all of us to cope with the so-called new or next normal in various areas such as healthcare, business, tourism, and even education, whether we like it or not. And in the field of education, our teachers and learners were forced by the pandemic to a new mode of learning to efficiently contain the virus and avoid physical interaction. And since this new or next normal heavily relies on technological skills, narrowing the digital divide across the region has been one of the apex top priorities for this year. Indeed, it is very this or even decades. And for the first time, for the, very, for the longest period of time, we are experiencing a serious pandemic that changed the lives of everyone and also shaped the goals and priorities of several international organizations and governments. It provided also for us an opportunity for institutions to look back and assess their capabilities and other aspects that need to be in place this challenge together. Cooperation, partnerships become even more vital and the sharing of best practices in relation to the use of ICT infrastructures and other innovative educational approaches and modalities are needed for us. Again, from this adversity together, or we call it so we can build back better, healthier, and stronger. That is why on behalf of the Secretary of the Department of Education, Her Excellency, Secretary Leonor Magdolis Briones and all the other ministries of education from the member economies, I would like to commend my sincerest appreciation to the Ministry of Education of the Republic of Korea and to IAS for enabling us to be part of this revolutionary program, especially at this time of the pandemic. This is a big leap. It's a big opportunity for our education policymakers to learn more about ICT related programs being implemented by our neighboring incumbent, the disintegrating effects of COVID 19 to education, and possibly use it for benchmarking in the respective institutions. Surely, this collaboration will shape the course of education in the 21st century and beyond, especially because technology is considered as the growling engine of change. Thank you very much, Ministry of Education of Korea, for the love for your little brothers and sisters. And before I leave you this morning virtually, let me share with you what Bill Gates has said in one of his books. Technology is just a tool. The kids working together and motivating them, the teacher also is the most important. We may be relying heavily on technological advancement at this time, but these gadgets, machines, and motors will never replace the role being played by our teachers in molding the minds of our future generation and preparing them for what the future holds. As I would always say, for things but emotions or feelings of a human being cannot be digitized. So to all of you, 
again to the Ministry of Education. Thank you to IAS with its very efficient staff. Thank you for the support. And thank you for shepherding the programs with the different economies through the Ministries of Education. Mabuhay kayong lahat. Kamsamida. Thank you very much, Salamat and Mabuhay, Dr. Margarita, for reminding us the human face of technology and COVID-19. So last but not the least, uh, we have action survey, uh, which is in the YouTube live chat. Please take the Google survey with us, and that will help us to improve our program. Your valuable comments are very important to us. Your feedbacks are also welcomed. So the last part of the program is to capture this moment with the group photo session. Although we cannot meet in person, for those of you who are joining us on the Zoom, please make the beautiful smiles and big smiles. For those of you who are joining us on the YouTube Live, please take the selfie and send your photos to the IACE at alcob.org. IACE at alcob.org. So let's take the first pose, Ace. On the count of one, two, three, please make the big smiles. One, two, three. There we go. And the next one is the two thumbs up pose. Please hold your thumbs up and show how great the AELT program is. On the count of one, two, three, are we ready? One, two, three, thumbs up, yay, the AELT is the best. And the last one, the second to the last one is a Korean style small heart. If you know how to make the small hearts with your fingers, please make them. You can make two hearts or one heart as you desire. Yay, we have the celebrities here on the count of one, two, three. We captured. And the last one is let's go AELT. Shall we do the fighting, the cheers outpost? And on the count of three, let's shout. A, uh, let's go AELT on the count of one, two, three. One, two, three. Let's go AELT. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for your wonderful so thank you very much, everyone. And once again, we deeply appreciate everyone who have joined our 2020 APEC e-learning training program, AELT Alumni Day. For those of you who are in Asia, we wish you a good morning and afternoon. And for those of you who are at the Alpha, good evening and good night. Until we see each other again next year, stay safe and well. Thank you very much for staying with us. 감사합니다.